Aircrafts need to be strong but incredibly light. In turn, their interiors, their cabinets, their all the furnishings need to follow the same suit. They need to be super strong but super light. And today we're going to look at the construction of some aircraft interiors. It's some of the materials used in the construction of aircraft interiors. To, to, to see, to take a look behind the scenes, to see what they're made of, and a little bit of the science behind them. Hello, guys and girls. Welcome back to Plain Simple. Uh, thank you for joining me again. Um, today I'll be looking at a, a couple of materials. Uh, that are used in the construction of aircraft interiors, cabinets, uh, divan structure, anything structural to support the interior. And the material behind how the, the strength and how light the interiors are is an old technology, but I think it's fascinating. It is called the honeycomb uh, sandwich panel. And the uh, honeycomb as part of the name comes from the core, the honeycomb core of the panel. As you can see through the skin, it is literally a honeycomb style pattern. It is a, a stacked up, uh, an array of hexagons connected back to back to back, which is a uh, fun fact, the structure behind the, the, the arrangement of the particles behind uh, nanotubes, carbon nanotubes and nanosheets. And that's the arrangement that they, t they take, um, uh, hexagons. But anyways, this is not, this is not carbon fiber. The, the, these panels are called um, honeycomb core sandwich panels. And there's a sandwich because they are, there's two, literally two skins sandwiching that honeycomb core. And I've gone away ahead and peeled off one of the skins here to expose the honeycomb core. Now this is a one eighth panel. Th these panels come in all different thicknesses. This is one eighth, this is a quarter of an inch, this is a half an inch, and they go up from there. You can get, you can get them as big as you want to. Um, they also come in different uh, thicknesses of skins, depending on the strength that you need for the particular application that you're using, whether you're the cabinet or th th that you're building, you're designing, you specify whatever uh, specifications of the material, the panel that you need. The thickness of the buildup of the panel, the thickness of the skins, the material of the skins, you can have this one here, the skins are made of fiberglass, you can get them in carbon fiber, in Kevlar, in aluminum, like this one down here. In these, the core is made of paper. Well, they, they call it a paper core. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the paper, what the, the formulation of the paper is. I'm not really interested in, in that either. I'm not a chemist. There's people that do that. I don't. But the core is, you can peel it away fairly easy. It's, it's paper that's been bonded uh, to, to, to the two layers, the two skins. Now, the panel itself, I'm getting rid of some of that glare, there we go. The panel itself, having two skins, is what gives it that rigidity. It is amazingly strong in, in compression, in tension, in twisting, in bending, in, in for taking forces in any direction you can think of and it's nothing but a paper core sandwiched between two fiberglass or any other composite uh, layers skins now I, in this one here that I took off I cut off one of the skins you can see that with one single skin how 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 flimsy how flexible it is But when you add the second skin, it becomes amazingly rigid. And this is just for this little thin strip. You go into a full-size sheet, and they're very, very strong. 
you go to a thicker core. And they just get progressively stronger and stronger. This one won't even budge. Listen. And yet it weighs absolutely very, very little. Amazingly light panels, amazingly light material. Very dimensionally stable. Uh, it is not really affected by changes in moisture and temperature. It is very dimension dimensionally stable. And if we graduate to the aluminum panel, you can see in there it still has the core, the honeycomb uh, core, but the skins are aluminum. And in this case, this core is also aluminum. This is not this is not a paper core. This is an aluminum core, making for an amazingly strong panel. Now, these panels, as as amazing as they are on their own, they have their limitations. Uh, you can't you can't put a screw directly, attach a screw directly to one of these panels, and have it support any type of load. The screw will wall out the hole. It can pull out. Uh, there, there's absolutely absolutely no strength if you just put a screw directly onto these panels. So how are these? Uh, how can you start from one of these panels and start building and joining and and screwing things to it and and be able to have the ability of taking things on and off and screwing, assembling pieces together and disassembling them repeatedly time and time again over the service life of an airplane. That's where these things come in. These are these pins are the equivalent of nails or screws in, in carpentry, for example. These pins are hollow. They're knurled and they're perforated. And they come in different sizes to match the size panel that you're using. They're, they're meant to fit within the skins, between the two skins. That would be the case for this panel. This gold one would be... Right here. You can see that it fits between the skins. The way you would use this is and say so you wanted to join these two panels in a 90 degree angle, like that. You would drill a hole through the top over here that lines up to the that falls between the two skins of your vertical panel over here. You drill a hole, push this in until this flared end is flush with the skin over here. And what you do is you inject epoxy through the inside of this pin, all the way down, that epoxy that epoxy, if you're injecting it through here, it's going to run down the inside of the pin and ooze out and squeeze out and extrude out through the end of the pin as well as these little perforations and so completely surround the, the pin with the epoxy as well as fill in the little voids in the honeycomb material all around the pin. So if this is the pin, you would end up with a, 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 a thickness of epoxy all around the pin. And that's going to spread the load of this basically nailing two panels together and spread that load amongst all that area all around. And not only that, but when it fills in those little cavities in the honeycomb panel, you end up with a jagged shape that is nearly impossible to pull out. Because that jagged, those teeth all around are such a shape that they key themselves into the core of the panel, the honeycomb core. So now it is very resistant to, ten, uh, to, to tension, so it will not pull out. That's how you join them together.
Now, what about screwing uh, screws into the panel? I will show you what the, what is used for that, and those are called threaded inserts, and I'll show you those in a minute. All right, now these are called threaded inserts, and these are literally metal inserts that get inserted and embedded into the honeycomb panels. These provide the thread and the wear ability. to thread screws in and out of the honeycomb panel. Now this becomes your, your wear item. This provides the, the, the strength of a metal thread and they come in different sizes, not only different lengths to match the thickness of the honeycomb panel. They come as as feed throughs, non-threaded, so the screws can or pins or whatever hardware can go clear through without threading. They come in different thread sizes for different screws. And they have a couple of smart uh, clever features. The way you install these is you would cut a hole into one skin of your honeycomb panel to drop these inserts into the panel. There is a little tab, a little sticky tab, which is matches these two holes in the insert. The sticky tab sticks to that right in the panel and you inject epoxy through those little holes. When you inject epoxy you're doing basically the same thing you did to the pins. You're surrounding the metal insert with epoxy all around and creating uh, an area that's keyed and jagged and has teeth all around that spread the load of a single point of load of a screw into a much 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 bigger area and now you're for, once you have the and, and I'll show you I'll, I'll demonstrate all this later on in the video um, just so that it, it makes a little more sense the, the, the stresses that a single point of contact screw would have on, let's say, one skin pulling out, it would be easy to pull out. Now you're multiplying that stress over the entire area of epoxy all around that insert. So you go from a single point to an area this big, S spreading that load into a much bigger surface area in this panel, per giving you a, a tremendous amount of strength. Now, once the insert is embedded in the panel, it looks like this. This is one application where you have, the, and, and this is a, a, a teaching aid. This is no longer part of an aircraft. But I just wanted to show the insert, which you can see the insert. Here's the bottom of the insert. completely surrounded by epoxy. N not on this side anymore because I broke it away. But you can still see that white, the white stuff all around. That is the epoxy completely surrounding the area, the immediate area all around the, the insert. So now you can see the contrast of the point where the screw goes and the load that that would be able to support once you multiply it times the area of epoxy surrounding that threaded that threaded insert. And and here you can still see the leftover honeycomb structure behind uh, uh, in between the skins. And once once all that it, uh, you embed all the inserts, you can laminate like in this case you can laminate over it and come back and punch the holes so that the inserts inserts are not exposed. But you can see an application where that has already been applied where the insert has already been shot and epoxied and it's seen its fair share of, of duty. Now, you don't always need to laminate or paint over the inserts. I'll show you one example where the inserts were added after the honeycomb panel was finished. 
and here it is. The uh, these are the drawers from from the in, uh, intro to this video. These are made of those very same honeycomb panels, but in this case, you can see that the the drawer was finished and laminated before the threaded inserts were added. And here you can see the inserts are exposed. And in this case, they they can be exposed because they're they're meant to house they're they're meant to hold a, a slide for a drawer slide. So it doesn't it, it's not a, a part that the passengers would normally see. So these inserts are okay to be uh, exposed. But you can see in, in this drawer, this is this is amazingly light. I know you can't tell, but it is very light. And you start with this, you laminate it, and then you can add the woodwork, wood finish, inlays, um, inserts. In this case, this would be uh, an ice drawer. That's what it has a stainless steel insert. And a drain somewhere in the bottom over there. That's the hole for the drain. But there's an example of a finished product with the inserts exposed, but already uh, installed. And now we're back to class. Um, the way you install these is using, you can use a variety of tools. Normally we use what's called uh, counter bores. This is a drilling, no, a hole making attachment. This is a, this is a hole making tool, much like a drill bit, but it drills a flat bottomed hole. It has a pilot hole, a, a, a pilot to match a, a pilot hole on your panel. So you can come in and locate where you want the, the screw to go and drill a pilot hole. This pilot matches that hole and you can use a counterboard to drill a flat bottomed hole that exactly matches your, your insert. You would drill through the panel, insert your insert, shoot epoxy in there, and Bob's your uncle. You're done. And there is also counter bores to match the size insert that you're using. You can also use rotor brooches. This is a, a normally a, a metal brooch. And this particular one is from the rotor brooch uh, brand. But these will also give you a, a, a very clean cut, a very precise hole. Now let's uh, let's shoot an insert. Let's let's drill one up and let's go through the process. All right. In this case, um, I don't have a pilot hole because this is only a demonstration. So I, I don't need the insert to be in any one particular location. So about here we'll do. And it would help if I tightened up the spring on my uh, pilot. And I was going to do that uh, behind the cameras, but if you're still here, that means you're interested, so I might as well show you the whole thing. This is the uh, the attachment that the you know, the rotor brooches thread into. This is threaded, so you can use whatever uh, size rotor brooch, whatever size brooch you want. In this case, this is a 29 size to match the insert that we're going to be using. And inside of here, this pin is spring-loaded. In this case, the spring is adjustable from the back. There is a uh, Allen set screw in there. As a matter of fact, I, mean, uh, I was going to pull the screw out, but now. You can thread this in using a regular Allen key. And what that does, it's pushing the spring that's housed inside, pushing the spring down until it puts pressure on your pin, as it does now. See that? Now that's spring loaded. Now that is going to give me the center and keep the brooch from wobbling around like it did the first time. All right. Let's try that again. Where did I say the uh, hole needed to be? About here. Perfect. There we go. Now, I 
punched through the first skin and part way through the core. If you let me turn the light on over here. If you look inside of there, the bottom you can see is the skin. The skin that I cut away from here, it got pushed in to the bottom of the hole. So let's pull that out. And you can see that we're gonna the next step in this is coring out or removing the core around this area to make room for the epoxy to come back and fill all that in once we put the insert in. That hole is where the insert goes into. But we want room for the epoxy once we shoot the epoxy in there, we want room for the epoxy to fill this all the way around. So we have to for that to happen, we have to remove that core from inside of there. And I'll show you how to do that in a right now. Let's do that now. All right, the tool that I like to use to remove the core all around the hole is this. Not exactly sure what it's called, but it's from Dremel. You can buy this at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you can, or Ace or wherever. Wherever you can find the Dremel brand, you're going to find this. And what this allows me to do is get into the hole and start eating away sideways at the core all the way to the bottom of the hole. You're going to see that in action now. This is the first skin, the top skin that we drill through with a little bit of the core still attached to it. And now we should have an area devoid of core all around the hole. That is the area that the epoxy is going to fill just like here. That is basically what I just did. Remove the core all around the insert. Oh, by the way, there's another clever clever uh, feature that I, I, I wanted to mention but forgot to. You notice how the bottom of the insert is not round, but it has these two flat, uh, flat sides? Like that. That is to provide a mechanical means of keeping the insert from rotating. Once that epoxy gets cured and gets solid, it is, you're not just relying on the chemical bond of the epoxy to the metal and to the honeycomb and, and, and to the fiberglass. You're also relying on the fact that you have a solid shape, like, key, like a keyway or teeth all around, surrounding another solid, this metal. So when they, these flat sides are surrounded by a solid epoxy, it will not spin, it will not rotate. It's being held in by against a rock on both sides. So those flat sides are a mechanical means of keeping the insert from spinning. If you have a screw that's corroded and if you tighten it too much and whatever, it's mechanical means of avoiding the stopping the insert from rotating. That's what the flat sides on the bottom are for. All right, so now it's time for a little tab which is self-adhesive. You would line up the two holes from a tab, sticky tab, with the two holes on your insert. Make sure that's properly adhered. Push your insert into the hole, and you're off to the races.
Let's bring the epoxy. All right, guys, I'm sorry. I, I, I took this off because I wanted to... When I shoot the epoxy, you should be able to see the epoxy filling in all around the hole. And I, w I wanted to try and show you that. So I took this back off and I tried erasing my, my pencil pencil marks. But I stopped because the, the eraser was leaving more dirt than, than taking pencil away. So we'll try again. I got some of it off. Yeah, hopefully it'll show. Now, the epoxy that I'm going to be using is this is only for demonstration purposes it's a softer epoxy than 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 what it would normally you would normally use but here's from 3m one of the epoxies you squeeze here's part a and b and you shoot them this mixed nozzle this nozzle over here has a bit of a labyrinth uh, path inside of it so it it mixes both parts of the epoxy for you all you do is squeeze the trigger and off you go and now yeah, we should be able to see our epoxy coming down the mixer yeah let me try another tube I don't think that tube was the problem. I think the mixer, whenever you're going to do epoxy, make sure you get a new nozzle. There we go. See that epoxy flowing back and forth in there? It's mixing it up for you. And we're ready. Let's see if I can do this closer. I'll give you some light. Let's see if we can fill if we can see that epoxy filling in all around the insert. And here, coming out the second hole, so that means it went around the insert, all around, and came out the other side. And there you go. You just shot an insert. Now that metal insert is embedded once the epoxy cures all around it, it becomes a solid and you end up with this. Now you just added a metallic insert threaded that allows you to screw things and attach things to the honeycomb panel. So now you know how they are uh, assembled together. You know how the panels are made, not how they're made, but they're, they're, they're designed. And how we add threaded inserts. So we can screw things in and out. No jokes. There you go. I hope you find it, in the, like always, like I always end my videos. If you've made it this far, thank you. I appreciate it. I hope it, um, it, it's not roaring jet engines, it's not afterburners and, and thrust and things, but nonetheless part of the industry, part of work, part of the aircrafts. And this is kind of a behind the scenes look that you wouldn't normally see, which is what I try to bring to you guys give you a, a side of the aircraft and a side of the industry that as a passenger you wouldn't normally see I hope you found it interesting if you do let me know um, yeah, I hope you guys are safe and if you have any questions let me know any suggestions uh, I, I do read the comments I do really appreciate the suggestions it's just that I don't normally get the opportunity to create a video about requests Mm, right after the requests are made. I kind of have to wait around until the opportunity presents itself. But uh, suggestions or questions are always more than welcome. Again, thank you guys very much and I hope you guys are safe. See you next time.